with, speaking of leaders who deal with these issues every day, we have next Sheriff Lee Baca, who is going to talk about his experience in helping to secure Los Angeles. Sheriff Baca. Thank you very much. I want to thank Dusha Bank and the London School of Economics and Politics for pulling together this amazing conference. Earlier, the panels talked a lot about the functionality of finance. And inherent within that discussion was the functionality of government. And I'm going to carry on with the functionality of government, one aspect of government, which is the public safety aspect. Simplifying my presentation, I have only one goal for the Sheriff's Department of Los Angeles County, and I'll explain that in a moment. Los Angeles County has 10 and a half million people. Over a million are illegal immigrants. There are over 100 consulates in Los Angeles County representing over 100 nations. The people of all parts of the world, every nation and every territory that may not even be a nation, have people represented in Los Angeles County. There are over 160 languages spoken. Every religion is practiced. Every ethnicity is engaged in. Every culture is embraced. The city of Los Angeles is our largest municipal government locally in the sense of a city size. But the county is the largest municipal government in the United States, which has over 100,000 employees of which 18,000 work for me in the Sheriff's Department. What's significant about this county is that the challenges that you experience here in Sao Paulo are similar to ours back home. My goal as the Chief Law Enforcement Officer of the county, which is an elected official's goal, I'm elected, I was serving for 33 years before I was elected, and 10 years ago, I was elected in my third term, and I have no term limits. My last election, I received 72% of the vote, which suggests that we're doing something right. The important thing about the one goal is this. You'll hear about professional policing. You'll hear about community-based policing. You'll hear about intelligence-led policing. But I have one goal. And that is to have public trust policing. And this little document that I brought, and there's some in the back, you're welcome to take one. But without public trust, there isn't a real thing to celebrate when it comes to policing. And therefore, I want to discuss with you what does it take to build public trust in the most diverse part of perhaps the world. New York and Los Angeles share the same responsibility, and I'm proud to say that Ray Kelly, the police commissioner there, and I have a very fine relationship and understanding. So this isn't just about Los Angeles. I'm speaking for the United States of America in many respects. Why? Because we have no national police. We have 19,000 police departments and 3,000 sheriff's departments. And therefore, we do things differently. Also within the county, there are 88 incorporated cities and 8,000, excuse me, 8,800,000 people live within those 88 cities and 1,200,000 plus thousand live in the unincorporated county areas. Now, the Sheriff's Department polices 40 of those cities under contract. Now, that's a novel idea that if you're under a contract, if the city mayor and the city council does not like what you're getting, they can fire you. And that's an important thing to recall in terms of these discussions that in the world of economics, you can pick and choose where you want to bank, where you receive your loans from, and how you want to pay your debt. But in public government, you have no choice other than to live with what you've got. And so the significance of me as a policymaker, and I set the policy for the public safety of 4 million people, is that you better do it right 
because you won't get a second chance. And competition is an important ingredient to quality. And government and bureaucracies today are not functioning at their highest point of capability. So the first thing is this. No job is too big and no responsibility is too small. That great government, and this is what we're talking about, how do we get to great government that coalesces with the private sector and manages its resources in a way that the taxpayers are getting the most for what they pay for, knowing full well that there's never going to be enough resources? The first thing is, what does it mean to be an American, in my case? Or what does it mean to be a Brazilian, in Brazil's case? The key to America is its laws. Our Constitution, our Bill of Rights, our civil rights, and our human rights are key to what is a law enforcement agency all about. You don't get to pick who you like to police and who you don't like to police. You will police everyone with equal enthusiasm and give them the full benefit of their humanity. The core values of your department must be tied inextricably not to yourself as police, but to the public in terms of its right to be protected by you, the law enforcement officer. So the core values of the Sheriff's Department are required for full memory of every member. And I have 18,000 employees. They must know these core values by heart. I'll recite them for you. As a leader in the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department, I commit myself to only perform my duty with respect for the dignity of all people, the integrity to do what is right and fight what is wrong, the wisdom to apply common sense and fairness in all that I do, and the courage to stand against racism, sexism, anti-Semitism, homophobia, and bigotry in all its forms. Those values are what we stand for. And public trust requires it. The public may never encounter a police officer, but they want to know, if they have to, what that person stands for. That police should not be a threat to a country's people. That police should be a part of everything that people are. In this book are 16 examples of inclusive involvement of the public. I have every religious community in Los Angeles County advising me on their issues. And there are some issues in the religious community, especially now with the Muslim community being challenged because of terrorism. I have every ethnic group from all regional parts of the world advising me about how I could do a better job in serving them. At the same time, we have a charter school a high school in the poorest part of the county that we run with the school district so that children can come to the sheriff's facilities in a way that their knowledge capacity can be built upon. That I am engaged with the health department in all aspects of what I can do to assist people so that they can receive their services on the level of where violence has affected their lives. I have 14 youth centers where activities are for children who are poor and disadvantaged and don't have the opportunity to live safely or walk to school safely. There is a whole set of interactions where volunteers, 5,000, come into our environment, and therefore our culture is not just police culture. It is the public culture and the police culture combined. We use every imaginable tool to engage the public through surveys. And we survey them about the quality of life as well as crime in their neighborhoods. We don't do it on the phone. We knock on every door. And it takes days to go through a half a square mile of territory where we're knocking on business doors and knocking on residential doors. What I'm saying is, as was said earlier, if you don't ask the public what they want, in the way of their public safety, you're not prepared to provide it to them. It is really fundamental that everything police do is with the public's approval. 
that police are not an entity in themselves that can do whatever they want to do at any time. In fact, police are the total embodiment of the legal system of a country. And if a police officer is not a moral authority of goodness, of creativity, of involvement, and an agent of change, and a willing leader, that that individual is underutilized and not doing what the country requires him or her to do. I can talk on about diversity and how much that engages what we do in our thinking, but I will currently say to you that if there's any more you want to know about public trust policing, I think I know what I'm talking about. Thank you.